IIT Madras Research Park in Chennai is making a significant contribution in nurturing tech startups. In fact, they have nurtured more than 300 startups, have achieved a valuation of more than $4.6 billion with a revenue of around $1.1 billion. And joining us now, Dr. Tamashpati Ghosh, the CEO of the IIT Madras Incubation Cell. Thank you very much, Dr. for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. If you can take us through the trends in IIT Madras startup in terms of the tech centric startups. So uh, being associated with IIT Madras Institute, obviously uh, the strengths of this ecosystem lies in deep tech, right? And primarily core engineering areas, faculties. Right. And uh, over the years, what we have seen is the startups that we have incubated as well in the ecosystem has uh, quite naturally mimicked the kind of technology innovation that has happened within the larger IIT Madras ecosystem as well as the IIT Madras research park where we are housed, right? Um, the largest number of startups that we have seen over the years that have, we have incubated are in the areas of manufacturing robotics, automotive primarily in the uh, electric mobility space. Uh, we do have large number of companies in the software uh, space, but it's not the generic software that we are primarily used to in India. Um, they are working on developing products in the artificial intelligence, so AI, ML, uh, metaverse right now. And there are a few very early stage work going on in the generative AI space as well, and large number in the data sciences. Health tech is another area which is uh, fairly large, and it's technology uh, intervention in healthcare. Um, medical devices, diagnostics, uh, SaaS platforms uh, for medical data protection. We also have a growing trend of companies now working in the um, energy sector. And primarily, um, as the world is talking, going towards the whole idea of climate change, uh, we have a large number of companies, or I would say companies as well as aspiring um, entrepreneurs which are working in this space of climate change, net zero, renewable energy. But majority start in India, are working to solve problems that are faced by our country through the technology you know, interventions. And some, of course, have the global market as well, right? So that happens at a probably a natural progression. So we are very proud of that fact that these are not just companies coming and building you know, high tech to sell it to an industry and sell it to a developed market, but they're also trying to solve uh, problems that uh, individuals in our society are facing from you know uh, disabilities to sanitation issues to energy related you know and transportation e mobility trying to reduce carbon footprint all those kinds can you also give us a sense of the unique ecosystem you have in place that makes all these possible so i'll just backtrack to how we started right um, and then try to answer your question right, right? So we just completed our 10 years, IIT Madras incubation cell. Um, so 10 years back when we started, um, we didn't go out for uh, grants and support from the government. That was never our approach. We decided that for us to be a vehicle to support and uh, help entrepreneurs to create businesses, we also needed to experience that journey, right? So we actually started as any other venture. We grew like a startup from the ground up and uh, grew in a very lean fashion. So it's not that heavy expenditures, go out and get grants and just spend, create infrastructure, create labs and all that, you know. Uh, our focus was always to uh, get the right support network for any first-time entrepreneurs that come to us. Of course, technology was our strength then and still is. With the technology strength that we had of IIT Madras, 
which is the faculty strength, right, the interdisciplinary strength, we leveraged that heavily. But we wanted to make sure that we were focusing on the right things. And so over the years, what we have done is one, and like I said, we as an incubator have embodied everything that we teach to our startup in order to create a, a monetarily viable commercial venture. We also need to make ourselves viable. I mean, today we are a self-sustaining uh, incubator. In fact, we have been for many years with absolutely no dependency of any grants of any kind from any agency, particularly for the gov from the government, whether it's the state or the center. And we say it with a lot of humility also. Of course, we are very thankful that the government is doing so much for the startup ecosystem, but it is important for us to, um, you know, that the whole idea of sustainability is very critical because this is what we are teaching the entrepreneurs. Um, like I said, because this is a deep tech incubator, majority of the founders that we are dealing with, irrespective of the age, are first time entrepreneurs, one, and second, these are technologists. That is their strength, right? But for you to create a successful venture, it is not about creating IPs. Many places that could be sort of the focus, but that is not the way to create scalable ventures. We're talking about scalable startups here, right? You have to be commercially, one, viable, and second, be able to cater to a large market, right? So your, um, your focus should be dot on from day one, which is the innovation, whether it's in a product or a service, needs to make money. So there must be takers, and in enough numbers who are willing to pay at the price that, that you are planning to sell it at and be able to scale that. And of course, if impact comes out of that, social impact, that's a add-on. And this is what we have we tried to do over the years. And we grew, the first thing we needed was mentors. Of course, IIT Madras was always there as a tech hub, the tech expertise. But mentorship in the areas of commercialization to help startups strategize correctly, to help startups you know, plan from day one what is required for them to go from point A to point B. How do you develop your team? How do you manage your cash? Right? Whatever little cash that you have, nothing is guaranteed. In fact, we don't guarantee any kind of funding support at the time of incubation, even today. You may say 10 years back, we didn't have money so much, so we couldn't, but even today, incubation, is independent of uh, funding support that we may provide later to our startup. Of course, we will do whatever it takes to help them to secure funding as and when they require, right? And thankfully now we are doing it very well. But they need to learn that they are here to create a commercially viable business and not an R&D project that needs to be successful. So we built our mentor network, we created or sort of uh, trained our management in the incubator as well, such that they are able to track progress of startups. Every startup that we incubate even today will be assigned a mentor, a business mentor. So they are mentors you go to for all your business requirements, including strategy, right? And through them comes a larger network that opens up. The incubator management's role is to monitor, to track startups' progress, particularly on the commercialization side, uh, side. Of course, many startups, depending on the area they're working in, for example, a medtech company versus a biotech, maybe space, will have different periods at which they will be ready to go to market. But they must be developing their product with the market in mind, you know, customer in mind. So we, are, we have created these support groups, support systems through our mentors, through our industry partners, through our investor network they should not get dependent on incubator from the early days for grant money. Instead, we should be pushing them towards raising funds from investor. So these are disciplines uh, that we try to inculcate in all our startups. Some very successful, others we are struggling, you know, but we don't give up. And sometimes we have failed as well, right? So that's the USP. That is the USP. So we have grown as a startup. We inculcate that whole idea of commercialization in the minds of our founders, our entrepreneurs, 
irrespective of their background, which is primarily technology. We bring in the right connect and support from the industry or the mentor pool who are probably uh, serial entrepreneurs themselves, have created large businesses. So their expertise come in very early on. In some cases, we also provide that linkage to the right industry partners where they can do their validation, maybe their first customer. And then the investor network is very important because they get to speak to investors very early on. You need to know what an investor is looking for, right, in terms of investment. They may not invest in you on day zero, but you're working towards that such that you will be able to attract investors when you need the money, right, and not feel desperate when the time comes. So this is how we have grown the ecosystem with focus on commercialization, brought in the right people. And of course, we've been very fortunate uh, that uh, uh, We've got some of our startups now, um, I mean startups from the early days now who have become very successful. So they also create that role model and the pathway of what works and what doesn't work, right? So they kind of you know, provide you with the pathway to kind of help the younger startups to plan better. And they also, we also learn from them quite a bit you know, through which their journey. Are, uh, which are the showpiece big ticket success stories, maybe unicorns? So we've had our first unicorn, um, uh, I think two years back, if I'm not correct, um, if I'm not wrong, I mean, um, Unifor, that, that is the first unicorn out of the incubation ecosystem. And multiple factors that we are very proud of. One, of course, our first unicorn. Um, second, uh, no connection to IIT. So that's another thing uh, we always highlight. It's IIT Madras incubation cell, but we are not limited to the IIT, Mad IIT ecosystem. Large majority of our startups are externals. So Unifor founders are non-IITians, but they are as much of, a, of the ecosystem as any other IITian for that matter. Third, uh, I think, we have learned a lot from the company itself, such that the founders now are mentoring a large number of our companies here, as well as is on the board of our incubation cell. Um, so Umesh is on the board of uh, incubation cell. So Unifor, uh, incredible journey. I don't need to go and get into it. I'm sure you'll be interviewing them at some point. Uh, the other soon to be unicorn, and we are keeping our fingers crossed soon, is Aether Energy. Uh, most of your audience, you know, uh, viewers will know. I've seen their vehicle, but perhaps their two wheelers, uh, coined as the, uh, the Tesla of India in the two wheeler space. Um, they sort of pioneered the space. They were the first ones. And we, all, of course, have a lot of options now, a lot more variants out there. So th the third uh, I, I would like to mention about is Medibuddy. Uh, I think large number of people in India is already using their platform for uh, doctor consultation. You know, from the remotest of areas to, uh, you know, you wouldn't be even be able to get appointments from such doctors and specialists, and they've enabled that. And now the platform has, I think, expanded to uh, diagnostics, medical diagnostic at your doorstep. Uh, was of great help during the COVID years, you know, many buddy. Um, Space is another area I think uh, we have also made a mark in terms of our startups, you know, being one of the first to enter that uh, domain. That's Agni. They will launch. Uh, um, I think uh, launch uh, rockets satellite. soon, satellites soon. Um, and it's everybody's, I think the whole of India, the mass are like watching closely what are the innovations and the landmarks India will make in the space technology. These are potential unicorns. These are potential unicorns, soon to be unicorns, yes. And the other uh, final one I would say is Telaps. Uh, in the dairy sector, again, socially impactful sector where they have uh, brought in technology and automated, automating large number of farms uh, within India. Um, also allowing uh, you know, insurance to farmers and have impacted greatly, you know. So these are some of the companies I'll say are, uh, one, we have a unicorn and soon to be unicorns. And then we have a plenty, I think 10 to 25 of companies that 
um, are nearing towards 1,000 crore if, or beyond, I'd say 1,000 to 2,000 crore valuation. And not just valuation, these are revenue-making companies. So we have a fairly large pipeline of deep tech companies in terms of technology, but making a mark in the Indian market. And we are very hopeful and uh, looking forward to their, you know, uh, scaling journey and... Uh, right. A decade ago, many said that out of every 100 ideas, only 4% would successfully end up as startups. What is your strike rate now? So with all humility, <laughs> um, it's fairly high. Uh, in fact, uh, people, uh, whenever we have visitors here, people we meet from all kind of sectors, you know, they probably first reaction is, you know, am I hearing you correct? You know, kind of. So um, we have an eighty percent success rate right now, and uh, we say it with a lot of humility as well as pride because it gives you a conviction that the model has worked what i was explaining to you earlier right in terms of approach we have taken um, uh, within the incubator of course in the 80 plus percent it's a different gradation of startups of course some who have done exceptionally well others are growing you know um, and some are fairly flat but they are generating revenue and self-sustaining kind of you know not all startups have to scale at that exponential level right so that is the composition within the uh, 80 percent that we uh, of the survival rate that we have you told me this ecosystem is not just for IIT students or alumni but yes. open for everybody how yes. does it work if I have an idea I can just walk in and share you immediately and hold us or? I think it is extremely easy we don't have any formalities for anyone who would want to speak to anybody in, within the incubation cell. In fact, the doors are always open and you can send an email, you can write to us, uh, obviously, and you can call us, you can walk in. Um, the research park itself where we are housed is open to everybody. So we do go with the brand name of IIT Madras, but um, over 55% of our startups here are non iitians And that's not a trend we have seen in recent years. That's been the trend lifelong throughout, yes. And we, we are very proud of the diversity that the non iitians have brought into the ecosystem. So as I said, very easy. If, if you have a startup idea. I yes. <laughs> So we, can, uh, we can discuss. Absolutely, absolutely. So you can send, drop in a line, send us an email at office at incubation.ac.in. Oh, sorry, office at incubation.iatm.ac.in. Or just give us a call or just reach us at uh, the research park. We are on the third floor, which is the incubation floor of the IIT Madras Research Park. And that's where the conversation begins. Of course, we have various levels of evaluation to make sure that you're ready to start a venture. That is very important for us. I think people are extremely important. It is not so much the idea, the technology. Uh, how committed are you? How aware are you of the journey that you're about to embark on? And of course, you, are, you, need to be, you need to understand what I said earlier, that you are starting a company not to create an IP. You're starting a company so that you create a product which is solving a problem, or you, you probably are creating a new market altogether. But there should be customers willing to buy that, right? So that is the whole idea. And we will work with you and bring in the resources that is required to help you in that journey. But you need to be aware of the hardships that may come your way, financial hardships, all kind of hardships. In the early days, the founders have to do everything, literally. Of course, incubation cell is there to help you. So all these things are parameters we are looking at. Should such entrepreneurs come with enough bank balance? Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. In fact, uh, what we have seen is, uh, and this is something our uh, president of incubation cell and the and the founder, Professor Ashok, says it. You know, Professor Ashok Jujinwala, you know, uh, says that, and we truly believe that. You know. Not because the sloganeering thing we are doing, it's just we have seen it through experience. 
too much money or easy money in the early days of a startup's journey is never helpful. You should work hard for that fund, right? For that money, the capital that comes your way. Just as you will be working really hard to generate your first revenue and then the second, you know, work order that comes and the third. So access to capital, of course, should be there. There should be multiple avenues. But if it comes too easy early on, um, it doesn't make your life easier as a venture, right? We do provide some small funding support over the course of your journey. We will connect you to the right schemes if you are eligible. We will enable that for you. We do bring in CSR from industry. We connect you to investors. All of that we will do. You don't need to come with X amount of capital. But of course, when you're registering your company as founders, you should put in some minimal amount of capital because that is your commitment to the company. And we insist that you do do that, you know. You told me this ecosystem is not just for IIT students or alumni, but open for everybody. How does it work? If I have an idea, I can just walk in and share. Do you immediately handhold us? Or? I think it is extremely easy. We don't have any formalities for anyone who would want to speak to anybody in, within the incubation cell. In fact, the doors are always open. And you can send an email, you can write to us, uh, obviously, and you can call us, you can walk in. Um, the research park itself, where we are housed, is open to everybody. So we do go with the brand name of IIT Madras, but um, over 55% of our startups here are non iitians And that's not a trend we have seen in recent years. That's been the trend lifelong throughout, yes. And we, we are very proud of the diversity that the non iitians have brought into the ecosystem. So as I said, very easy. If, if you have a startup idea. I have. Yes. <laughs> So we, um, can, we can discuss. Absolutely, absolutely. So you can send, drop in a line, send us an email at office at incubation.ac.in. Oh, sorry, office at incubation.iatm.ac.in. Or just give us a call or just reach us at uh, the research park. We are on the third floor, which is the incubation floor of the IIT Madras research park. And that's where the conversation begins. Of course, we have various levels of evaluation to make sure that you're ready to start a venture. That is very important for us. I think people are extremely important. It is not so much the idea, the technology. Um, how committed are you? How aware are you of the journey that you're about to embark on? And of course, you, are, you, need to be, you need to understand what I said earlier, that you're starting a company not to create an IP. You're starting a company so that you create a product which is solving a problem, or you, you probably are creating a new market altogether. But there should be customers willing to buy that, right? So that is the whole idea. And we will work with you and bring in the resources that is required to help you in that journey. But you need to be aware of the hardships that may come your way, financial hardships, all kind of hardships. In the early days, the founders have to do everything, literally. Of course, incubation cell is there to help you. So all these things are parameters we are looking Should at. Should such entrepreneurs come with enough bank balance? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right. In Absolutely. fact, uh, what we have seen is, uh, and this is something our uh, president of incubation cell and the, and the founder, Professor Ashok, says it. You know, Professor Ashok Jujinwala, you know, uh, says that, and we truly believe that, you know. Not because the sloganeering thing we are doing. It's just we have seen it through experience. Too much money or easy money in the early days of a startup's journey is never helpful. You should work hard for that fund, right? For that money, the capital that comes your way. Just as you will be working really hard to generate your first revenue and then the second you know, work order that comes and the third. So access to capital of course should be there. There should be multiple avenues. But if it comes too e easy early on, um, it doesn't make your life easier as a venture, right? We do provide some small funding support over the course of your journey. We will connect you to the right schemes if you are eligible. 
we will enable that for you we do bring in csr from industry we connect you to investors all of that we will do you don't need to come with x amount of capital but of course when you're registering your company as founders you should put in some minimal amount of capital because that is your commitment to the company and we insist that you do do that you know and what's your vision now you have achieved a valuation of 4.6 billion it's actually 5 billion now okay, you know? okay you've achieved a it's 5 billion now so what's your vision next wow yeah we are we have we want to do a lot of things you know um and literally um so as a university based incubator an academic incubator i think we have do, done marvelously well in fact i don't i don't believe that you can find another uh, even another iit where you will find these kind of figures these kind of performance of startups you know in terms of commercial performance so we've done very well and uh, i think we have been appreciated the ecosystem has been appreciated by large number of uh, people whether it's our board our industry partners our donors um, over the years um, our investor community and all that and we can continue to grow in this manner deep tech companies uh, primarily coming from major s- cities in the country um, probably uh, students from fairly well to do engineering science colleges like the iits the nits um, we can still grow very well but we were fa- we were uh, sort of posed with a challenge by our board a couple of years back and this happened during the covid years where with the tough times and whatever was going on that while we can still grow in this manner this 42000 tomorrow can become 82000 you know uh, produce deep tech solutions and all kind right but um at the national scale are these numbers impactful enough i mean india is a very very large country so 330 startups tomorrow it can maybe another 5 6 years down the line that can become 600 startups even 1000 for that man is that impactful enough right and so the answer was no we need to think big we need to uh do a lot more and so we were thrown with a challenge uh, close to 2 years back and we've already made some degree of progress in trying to implement that which is can we in 10 years time be incubating 1000 startups a year this it's not a cumulative figure but every year we are incubating bringing in 1000 th- new startups and we said well we can i mean the way we are scaling perhaps we, even if we reach 500 per you know even 500 600 that's a huge accomplishment right but can we look at something as impossible as that but where would we get these startups from right we can't be just targeting iits and iims and well iims don't produce much you know ventures the other tier 2 uh, and the other tier 1 tier 2 colleges right that's when uh, i think our senior management professor ashok you're reaching out there now you're reaching out to them now try to say yes but what we decided was that we will focus more on the regions where they don't have enough opportunity but they have great talent right so we are talking about the tier 2 tier 3 cities even tier 4 towns of india large number of colleges there engineering to science arts colleges which is producing large number of students no everybody cannot be getting their you know their the jobs that really pay well there are people who are enterprising enough there are people who would want to do more you know solve a problem that is locally out there are they being given the right opportunity so what we have done in the last two years and this is basically our vision for the next 10 years as the incubation cell grows in its general you know our work startups deep tech valuations you know more commercial successes we want to also work with large number of institutes across the country particularly in the tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 towns and maybe in some cases rural areas also where we can you know provide that avenue to young uh, graduates young students that there is a alternative career option you can do a lot more for the country tomorrow you can create 
employment for your village and for your town that you're from, right? We are, we are partnering with colleges. So far, we have partnered close to, I think, 15, 16 colleges, primarily in southern India right now. But we will be expanding to pan-India, uh, where we are helping them create entrepreneurship ecosystems within their college, within their university, um, providing their students the opportunity to learn, be aware of what it takes to be an entrepreneur, um, you know, trigger the creative side of, of these students because general curriculum, you know how it is, you know, they barely get to do practicals, let alone any kind of, you know, building activities and, you know, product building and all that. So through all these mechanisms, can we bring out these um, individuals who tomorrow can become the uniforce, right? Solving a problem which is very close to their heart there. They need not go to a foreign country to approve that, right? So we are doing that and we hope that we will through this mechanism right, of partnership with these various colleges pan India, incubate large number of companies, co-incubate with them in fact, you know, and help us to achieve that target of 1000 startups per year. Big year big Jobs year. wise? So uh, we are actually through this whole uh, um, sort of the experience that students would go through, right? second year, third year, fourth year students. It's not that the, it's just the graduate, graduating class. We are exposing them first to the idea of building things. So creative, uh, you know, science and engineering projects, which is outside their curriculum. So one, they get this confidence. Second, they have this, they, they experience this creative side of themselves, you know, which allows them to be more attractive to employers as opposed to somebody that just graduates with a degree from X engineering college, right? So we, in addition to the partnerships that we have done with these uh, various 15, 16 colleges in southern India, uh, where we will help them to create an incubator and all that. But first what we are doing is we are helping them create build clubs. We've named it as build clubs. These are actually uh, physical spaces, but physical is the secondary part, but you need a physical space. Physical spaces where uh, students of any faculty, any discipline, any year can come together and build things. Tomorrow, those products can be um, a solution to a problem that probably they are seeing in their immediate vicinity. Could be in agriculture, could be something to do with water, you know. Uh, cleaning of water, water bodies, for example, climate change, for example, right? Um, so we are helping them to create um, and build these uh, very innovative products, which, and also they come and spend time at the research park. They spend time with our startups here. Many get internships also during their summer, yes. you know, breaks. This, uh, you, are, you have referred to 7,000 jobs created so far. Yes. So what's the target now? 7,000, I would say, is under. Quoted. I mean, we try our best to uh, sort of collect the numbers from our starters, but we are talking about direct jobs. Right now, the number is around, hovering around, I think, 8,000 to 9,000. Um, indirect jobs would be much larger, you know. Sorry, this is like, yeah. The indirect jobs would be much, much la larger, right? Um, so, but at the same time, I, and this is my personal opinion, I think. It is not the responsibility of startups to create jobs. That is the responsibility of large corporates. I think what startups are allowing, they're doing multiple things. Of course, they give you that, um, I mean, they give you that confidence in youth that you can do anything. Because what a startup can do within a certain period of time, large corporates cannot. You know, they are the technology, they're setting trends in the tech industry, they are disrupting markets, um, they create this extremely agile kind of a ecosystem where you know you, you can do anything and quite flexible you know which generally uh, large corporates cannot and you are giving um, young people an alternative you know way of you know, uh, growing in their career, whether you create a success, su successful venture or not, the learning is in, 
is amazing and these become then great uh, resources for large industries as well. But yeah, as startups grow and they scale, when we're talking about scalable startups, right? Um, of course, they generate large number of jobs, right? Large Automatically. Jobs. Thank you so much for your time. And that was Dr. Tamashpati Ghosh, the CEO of the IIT Madras Incubation Cell, talking to us, giving the story of the successful startups they've been incubating over these years and the vision ahead. In Chennai, at the IIT Madras Research Park with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find the TV.